Hey, so I just looked this morning and uh, it just rolled over to 5,000 subs. So I just wanted to give a big uh, thank you to everybody that subscribed and watches my videos. I know some of them are long and they carry on and carry on, but I don't know. I, I try to include all the information in these videos. So, But big thanks to all you guys for all your help over the last three years. Has it been three years now? I'm not sure. It's been a while, a little bit. It's 170 videos almost, so it's got to be three years. But uh, yeah, so 5,000 subs, that's a big milestone for me. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting maybe one or 2,000, and I uh, far surpassed that. So yeah, thanks again, you guys. I appreciate all your support and uh, all your great comments. To my clients, thank you for all the incredible gear I get to fix. I like that too. It's, um, it's, uh, it's nice to have... Uh, a chance to work on different things that I've never seen before that's really I enjoy that as well so again thanks again take care and we'll see you in the next one all right so here it is the inner sanctum this is where I do all my work it's a whole room I have dedicated it's probably about a 11 by 14 room and it looks pretty shocking I know it's got a lot of junk and crap and I was really hesitant on doing this video because that means I have to do cleaning up. And uh, believe it or not, I did to clean this room up so you could have a good look at it. But here it is. I got a request a while back to uh, have a shop tour. Or not a shop tour, but a bench tour. And I thought that was a good idea. So let's, let's do it. Uh, let's start with the bench. So pretty much that's where I sit right there. And, and that's where I do my work. And I got all, to my right, I got all my hand tools. Pretty much everything I use, everything I use more infrequently goes, gets hidden underneath. There's a big toolbox underneath full of stuff, full of stuff. And uh, Lenny Cross, if you're watching, yeah, I'm still using your toolbox. He gave it to me. It was nice of him. I, he was going to throw it away. I says, no, give it to me. So on the left-hand side, I usually keep my meters. I got three meters here. I got my analog, digital, digital, and then I got my uh, power meter. And I keep that here. I also keep a few other things like solder dewick, soldering uh, wick, um, epoxy, cement, stuff like that, uh, paints, just so that, you know, it's easy to reach to my left hand here and I can grab it. This here is usually just a pile of junk parts. If I get parts in, um, they usually go here until I can sort them and put them away. Um, keep a lot of documentation here. I keep uh, um, schematics, my notebook for all my my work I do I keep notes on everything I do to every piece of equipment and uh, yeah so let's look at the bench itself on the bottom here I have my heath kit uh, what is this thing it's an IO 4550 10 megahertz um, kit I, I built this from a kit I bought it as a kit and I built it and I, and I really love this analog scope it's got some wax on it or something but uh, I should use that more often. It's just buried here and it's usually stuff in front of it so I can't access it. So, But it is a good scope. Um, probably haven't turned it on in 15 years. But the, uh, yeah, it was, I bought this in the 80s. And I think I paid a good sum for it too, like six or $800 for the kit. Um, that was back when uh, here in the city we had a Heath kit store, believe it or not. There was a store and it was dedicated to all of uh, Heath, Heath Kit's products. You could buy kits there, you could buy assembled stereos, and they had a showroom, and uh, yeah, that's where I bought it. I also bought a number of other, other Heath Kit devices too, I sh I'll show you in a, in a bit here. So, back in the corner, I got a Variac. Don't use it very often, uh, but it is here if I ever need it. It's got an ammeter on it, and uh, it works perfect. Okay, and then I got a little bit here for alignment tools, different things I might need. Uh, above my Heath kit scope, I got my 8590A, my HP 8590A uh, spectrum analyzer. I bought that on eBay probably two, three years ago now, and I think there's a video on it, I'm not sure. But I did repair it. It had a fault in the power supply, repaired it, and got it working. I'm not entirely sure if it's still is working properly but it does work i don't know if it's working accurately though that's the only thing uh, up here i got all my rf connectors bnc to rca to whatever and uh, 
all my adapters and connectors and gizmos. Keep all my cleaning stuff here, my Q-tips. Couple perf boards, always gotta have those. Now, in behind here, you can't see is black. That is my isolation transformer. So you can see on the left-hand side here, you got your outputs. And there's a switch here. I can adjust the voltage on the line. And plus I can select different, different taps on the transformer for the different outlets. And um, it's all turned on by one switch. So basically I just built it out of uh, two transformers I yanked out of an old IBM printer. You know those printers that are the size of a refrigerator. It had these big transformers in it so I put two of them back to back and uh, there's my isolation. I think it can do about 190, 100, 200 kilovolt amps. I'm not sure. I never really tested it. I should test it. Next up, I got my HP 3468B multimeter. It's a nice multimeter. It's accurate. The only thing I don't like about it is the LCD display. It's not backlit. I wish it was because it's way up on the left hand corner here and my eyes aren't good and I can't really see the digits when they come on. It's kind of hard to read. I wish it was backlit. But this is a nice multimeter for this is the one I use for all my voltage measurements when I do an amplifier power tests. So I want it to be accurate. Above that is my Micronta Micronta variable DC power supply. So zero to twenty-four volts linear supply. It's undergone many repairs and upgrades. So you know I've done little things to it. Uh, like for example, I added ten turn pots, ten turn pots, put a little LED so when it's turned on you got an indication it's just a nice it's a nice clean quiet power supply if I'm doing something that I need to uh, quiet DC so that's pretty good and then above right here I got two cheap Chinese switching power supplies one of them I use to run a fan a ventilation fan I got where is it right there and that sucks away the fumes when I'm soldering or using chemicals and the other one I just use, uh, well actually I stopped using it because I bought a new one. I bought this one. And this one I wanted because it goes up to 60 volts and 5 amps. So uh, it's more versatile. And it's got a better better readout. It's got uh, an indication for how much wattage I'm drawing. Which is better than these other ones that don't have that. These are just volts and amperes on the meters. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of these little little knobs here. These are these these here. These aren't very good. They're not kind of awkward to use, to tell you the truth. But hey, it does the job. And then up here, I have another power supply that nobody ever really sees, and it doesn't get used much. But it's a one kilowatt, uh, zero to three hundred volts, uh, zero to three point five amps um, switching power supply. It says Xantrex XKW three hundred dash three point five. Yeah. So uh, it's a really nice, nice industrial kind of grade power supply. It, uh, it's got fantastic meters on it, voltage and current. Not a really noisy fan, but works great. Up top here I keep all my cleaning solutions, all my lubricants and glues, some adhesives. Mostly, mostly cleaners and adhesives and uh, there's some alcohol up here too. That's where I keep all this stuff. It's usually in easy reach. When I stand up, I can grab it. And that's all sitting on my Fluke 6080A. And this is a synthesized uh, signal generator. It's another piece of kit I bought on eBay and repaired. And it works like a charm. I love it. So, right in front of me, I have my uh, EWA distortion noise meter, the F242A. I just got this. And there was, I put out a video of it not too long ago. And I've had a chance to use it a couple times, and I really like it. I think it works great. Uh, once I figured out how to work it, and uh, what it's measuring, and uh, how it works, uh, I think it works really great. Probably needs an alignment. I don't know. A calibration? I'm not sure. But I do like it. It works great. And then actually below here I have my little parts trays that I use if I'm doing uh, multiple jobs. I have each each drawer can be a job in itself. So if I'm working on two jobs at once, I'll use up two trays. Here's some parts from the last uh, 
That's from the Rock Gold amplifier, and there's a few other parts in there. This is a current tray for the NAD I'm working on right now. This is a NAD uh, 7225, and here's another one that's from a project that's put on hold. So, yeah, I'm working on this NAD 20, sorry, 7225 for, for Rick, so that's what's on the bench right now. So I got, this is actually from, this is actually an old uh, hard drive caddy from a server. Uh, it, and it had these blanks, blank outs. And I thought, you know, that makes perfect drawers for parts. So I mounted this up underneath. And I got four drawers that I can put screws and caps and transistors in if I'm working on something. Uh, beside that I have the 4272 voltmeter. Uh, I also made a video on this one bought it on eBay, repaired it, built a little power supply for it, and it works great. Uh, I actually love using this thing too. Got to have a vacuum tube voltmeter. And this is not vacuum tubes, it's uh, FETs inside here, so really nice. Got a reel of wire back there. Uh, projects I'm waiting for to get started on. Lots and lots of projects here in bags. We got the infamous Rigol DS1102E, the scope that I hate. I hate this scope. It's terrible. Um, but it works. It does the job, so I can't complain. And uh, it was cheap, so whatever. Below that I got my East Tester. It's an ET4401 LCR meter. And I absolutely love this thing. If you, uh, they're a little pricey. They're about well, for me it was about $400, but for the Americans I think it would probably be closer to $250. You can get one of these. Um, I, I really like it, and it's been going strong for a couple of years now. And uh, no problems whatsoever, and I really enjoy using it. There in the corner is my heat kit IM2410. That is a frequency counter that I built for my kit, again, from heat kit. And uh, it works does the job, does what I want it to, so I'm happy. And then down here I got my cheap Chinese JDS 6600, DDS signal generator counter, and uh, recently I learned since getting this piece of gear that this piece of gear is a piece of crap. It uh, It's very noisy and uh, it's, yeah, it's, but it, you know, for just pumping audio signals into an amplifier it's good. But I wouldn't use that for taking measurements because it's, uh, really noisy. Right here I got my soldering, got my 4624 Ungar, uh, which I'm using with a Weller, uh, with this is a 9931AS, and uh, that's my main solder. And then I have, I just bought another Weller, and um, this one's nice for doing fine work. I like it. It's got, I got a pencil tip on it, and uh, it's nice, feels good in the hand. It's got, uh, it's good, good heat up. It's got a digital display. It's a really nice unit. I like that. And then I have a cheap Chinese D six eighty six D that needs a new fan. I ordered a fan three months ago. Still not here. Kind of annoyed by that, but uh, I need to get a new fan for that. But when it's working, it works good. So I got no complaints. Then I got all my tis. Test leads, clip leads, uh, test probes, connectors, cables, all that kind of stuff hanging here off this board. And I got a little bit on this side too, test leads. Not too many. I try to keep this side clear because access the wall of parts. We'll get to that. So, yeah, this is pretty much a little bit of everything. I still need to get a few cables and, uh, you know, you name it, different, different connectors on each end and whatnot. But uh, there it is. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot about my electronic load. Actually, I use this quite a bit, and uh, I really like it. Um, it's very, very useful if you want to test a power supply to see if it's putting out what it says it's going to put out. And, uh, you know, if you have a piece of kit that's shutting down and you suspect the power supply is weak, connect this thing up and it'll tell you if, if it's putting out the juice or not. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty handy. I like it. I didn't need four channels. I should have only made a two channel one, but why not, you know, if, uh, and it's really cheaply made parts 
if I uh, if I were to do this again, I would probably spend more coin and get some better meters. And uh, yeah, I'd probably juju it up. You know what I mean? Got a couple things of shelving here. The top, those bins of speakers. And the uh, blue bin on the left is magnets, uh, white boxes, CPUs, speakers, and then there's solar panels back there. And then the next one down, I got transformers, ones I've yanked out of stereos I salvaged. I'm going to be using one of these transformers here in the near future, so it's good to hang on to that kind of stuff. Uh, this one's knobs, different knobs from old stereos. It's like a treasure trove there. If you look through it, there's new knobs, old knobs. TV knobs, you name it. And then down here I have uh, probably just more crap. This is just uh, cabling, different wires and cabling. That's all capacitors there, surplus capacitors for that. And on this side, what do I got on top there? Oh yeah, AC chargers and adapters and bricks for laptops and all that stuff. This is all stuff for dealing with uh, line operated voltage switches uh, fuses uh, you name it uh, here i got my tubes all in this bin big pile of tubes and then i got some old test gear here it's piled up and probably retired for good now old test gear down here i got power cables more cables i got Right here I got, uh, this is a gold mine here, this is all capacitors, brand new, spanking new capacitors, thousands of them. Uh, I buy them at a good price at, in bulk and uh, I use them, I go through them, don't worry, they get used. So if I just keep going along the wall to my right here, this is all storage. So all these units that are wrapped up, these are all uh, previous videos, that's the uh, HH Scott 316, uh, there's an SX 3600 there underneath it, HK503. HK495, a Citation 15 in the middle, and a 330B on top. So those are, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with those yet. I sell them, uh, probably end up selling them, and uh, recoup some of my money that I put out to get acquire that stuff. There's a Sansui G series, I don't remember what, I think it's a 3500 or something like that. And then there's a Nyko NR700. Again, those are done. And uh, if I go down a little bit farther, there's some future episodes. I don't know if I should show you future episodes. You might. This is an old HK tuner. It's an ST2000. That's going to be a future episode. Uh, there's my tube tester. Here's another future episode. This one is a, uh, I think this is a Harman Kardon 230. Right here is a, I think it's a Denon CD player. That's going to be a future episode as well. And then I just got stacks of stuff here. For example, there's a uh, HP, what is this thing? An 8640B, that signal generator that was in an episode a while back. And I really don't have a use for it. But uh, it's just sitting here till we decide what happens to it. PM640, I think that's been on the show before. And here is one that's uh, never been seen. See, HK340. It's mostly a parts unit. It's broken, as you can see. So I think it's just going to be a parts unit. And a PM645. I think that's been on a future, a previous episode. Here's an Onkyo. This is a TXSR313. Uh, if you guys want to see an episode on this, let me know. And here's another tuner, HK tuner. It's a T220. Missing all the knobs, but still, it's a future episode. If you guys want to see that one as well, let me know. Okay, so all along the top here I have belts. Uh, all my different belts. New old stock. There's the belt reader. Belts, belts, belts. And uh, it goes on and on. Belts, belts, belts. More belts, more belts. Oh, this is cool. Here, I'll show you this. So yeah, whenever I come across these old Archer parts in the from Radio Shack in these capsules, I always grab them. Look at this uh, decode 1986, and there's a 555 timer. Look at that, in original packaging. 
Is that a Motorola part? Yeah, it's a Motorola NE555. Wow, that's like gold nowadays, isn't it? We paid $1.99. Here's an old relay. Stock number 275-004. $2.99 for a little relay. It's a six volt contacts. So it's just for batteries, playing around with batteries and stuff. Six volts DC, 500 ohm, 12 milliamps. And you give you a little thing how to wire it up. Because we're all dummies, right? <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Look at the dust on there. Here's an old resistor somebody bought for 39 cents. They bought a pair of resistors and used one of them. Only 10% tolerance, eh? But that's that's not true because it's got a gold band here. So they up they upgraded us to 5%. We're paying 10% prices. And then uh, since we're in Canada, everything's in French on the back. Resistance. Metal oxide barrister. What's the date code on this one? I don't know. And it gives you a little data sheet on the back. It gives you your ratings. I liked, it. I liked when they did that because it saves you from uh, trying to look it up in a book somewhere. Because we didn't have the internet back in those days. You didn't have internet to go online and pull up an instant data sheet whenever you wanted. You had to either have a book or know some way of finding out this information. That's... Uh, that was a really big thing to have data on the back of a package. That was really good. And I think that's why they were so successful in selling all these stuff, all these little bits and pieces. Look at this one. Still in this package. $30. Text-to-speech controller IC. And I think, what's the date code on this one? 1984. Copyright 1984. Yeah, it's got the data sheet in there. It was all rewritten for the uh, the dummies. I bought parts at Radio Shack, and there it is. I was just talking to somebody about this not too long ago, and we were reminiscing about having these chips and making uh, digital speech. Hmm. I can't get back far enough to get it all in, but that's the wall of parts, and I'll show you what I have in stock here. So this first one here is mostly LEDs, neons, LEDs, uh, some fusing, mostly fuses, and incandescent bulbs, incandescent bulbs, and just uh, some random crap in the bottom there. This one here is mostly linear ICs, and linear ICs are hard to categorize and, and store, so it's a work in progress. So, and then I got tires and belts, and more random crap. You can see I got some... Uh, Power amp IC chips here, a whole bunch of them. This stuff here is mostly switches, switches and for stereos. Uh, like, oops, I'll pick that up. These kind of switches, and I try and find a new stock of these and buy them. And a lot of these will work for stereos, even though they aren't the same part. But there's a lot of stuff here: switches, switches, switches. There's some terminal strips. Mostly uh, switches. And then down below here we got capacitors from uh, 470 nanofarads up to, what we got up to 3300 microfarad. These are all just random values, random voltages, uh, different kinds of caps. Uh, down below I got different caps, poly caps, styrene, I got ceramics, silver micas, uh, X-rated caps, micas, all that stuff. And then up here, I got more caps. These are all sorted from 100 picofarad down to uh, 2.2 2 .2 microfarad. And these are like all my ceramic and film caps. And uh, that's pretty much it. Trim pots, switches. Here, these are all transistors. This is another work in progress. Transistors, I've already sorted 2SA and 2SB. I'm working on 2SC right now. 2SD, uh, 2SJ, 2SK, and then I got all my other transistors, uh, the European ones, still, uh, germaniums, uh, you know, the 2N uh, series, MOSFETs, everything in there. And then I got uh, stock of, I'm fighting me, I'm fighting me, stock of new transistors. 
these are mostly Japanese transistors. There's a lot of different ones in here. I'll try and buy a stock of those. This stuff is mostly just miscellaneous relays, hardware, ferrite beads, clip leads, test clips, chokes, uh, different things. It's all a mismatch. And same with this one. It's uh, I do have some I, uh, linear ICs on top here, but then it's mostly just uh, a mix-up of different things, and that's a work in progress. This one here is resistors, and it starts off at 0.1 ohms, and it goes all the way down to 18 meg ohms down right there in the corner. So this is all resistors sorted out by value, and uh, all different wattages. They're all in the drawers. These ones here, mostly hardware, screws, um, nuts, washers, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, lock washers. Everything that's hardware, machine screws, self-tappers, and then a bunch of miscellaneous there too. Down below I got capacitors. These are all brand new capacitors from 2.2 microfarad all the way up to 47 microfarad, all different voltages. All different, uh, well, I, I mostly have 105C, so that's probably what they mostly are. And here's the rest of them. This is from 100 microfarad up to 470, or 4.7 thousand, up to 10,000 actually. So there's all different values and different voltages. Those are all brand new, high quality caps. This one here is mostly silicon, uh, diodes, SCRs. Triax, op amps, uh, voltage regulators, rectifiers, uh, heat sinking stuff, a little bit, you know, it's all that uh, has to do with semiconductors and working with them. And I think that is it. I think that's it. Yeah, I covered them all. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? So here I'll show you a future episode. Here's a dual 1249. And uh, this is a fur customer of mine. And he wants a complete, complete service to it. He's going to, uh, very nice turntable. He's going to get it going, or I'm going to get it going for him, and um, he's going to give it as a gift to somebody very special to him. So that's a nice gesture. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to, that's coming up. So look for that one. So here's another future episode. It just looks like a pile of junk, but uh, it's a work in progress. I've already started videoing on this one. So yeah, that's going to be coming up. Probably going to make it a multi-part series because there's a lot going on here. And I don't want to give too much away on that one, but I'll show you the other part of it. Here's the other part of the of the secret project. So that's upcoming. Uh, this is an Akai GX270D, and uh, I also went online and bought some some nice kit for it. So we're gonna go through that, and we're going to have a future video video on this one too. And here's another future video. This one uh, was dropped off yesterday by my client. Probably won't see this one for another four weeks or so, but uh, we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get it fixed up. He says it's got some problems. And some of you are asking about this one that I uh, left in limbo. I am gonna get back to it. I still, the parts have come in, some parts have come in for it. Uh, I just gotta go run through the list and check and make sure I have all the capacitors I need. And uh, as soon as I get some of my clients work out of the way, we're going to get back to this and uh, have another video on this one. I know you were asking. So there it is. This is basically it. Uh, not much more to show you. But as you can see, I don't have much room for doing a large large items. I don't have much room at all. I see some of the other guys out there that have huge bench benches like uh, Mr. Carlson's lab there. He's got one that stretches across the whole room. And uh, he's got all his room for all his gear. And, you know, if he needs needs to he can move it to the other side and do different stuff but I only have the one spot and I have to be very efficient on my space and uh, how I store things and how I do things because uh, it's a really tight working spot so anyways that's it for this thanks for watching uh, I hope you made it to the end it was pretty boring uh, thanks again for all the subscribers 5,000 it's great it's a great milestone uh, thank you guys a lot and uh, I didn't expect it to get this far. All right, take care.